American troops exercising in the Saudi desert. Whatever the United Nations background, if there is to be a war, it will be an American war, with 450,000 US troops deployed here. Indeed, the Americans have almost unassailable confidence in their aerial superiority, favoring an initial massive strike at Iraqi radar, airfields and supply lines from Basra to the front. US fighters aided by 28 B-52 bombers, it's the Vietnam strategy. Though the Americans are supremely confident it'll work this time around against a conventional army and air force. Royal Air Force officers are more cautious about a quick decisive strike, but confident of superiority over Saddam Hussein. Politics meets strategy here. With defense budgets shrinking both sides of the Atlantic, if the air forces could prove they could win a war effectively from the air, the implications for future defense spending could be far-reaching indeed. And the Royal Air Force is keen to let film crews publicize weapons that can have enormous power, like the JP-233 missile, unavailable to the Americans, that can fire multiple penetration bombs to destroy airfields, buildings, radar sites, and people. On land, the US and British armored divisions with their M1 and Challenger tanks are way outnumbered by the Iraqis, but the Allies put their faith in technological superiority of their equipment. But a frontal assault against well-dug-in Iraqi tanks will be a bloody affair for both sides. British armored divisions will be under direct US command in the only formalized agreement in the entire alliance. Our work alongside the Marines has given us great confidence in our ability to fight together if that's what we're called upon to do. Indeed, the Americans plan to use forces from the other 26 nations purely in a backup role. With one exception, Syrian, Saudi and Egyptian armoured units which are nearest to the front at the Kuwaiti-Saudi border. And offshore, the United States fleet dominates again. Three more carriers and 20 more ships are en route, allowing bombing runs from carriers and long-range shelling for the 16-inch guns aboard the US battleships Wisconsin and Missouri. So much for the strategy of war and the hardware of mass destruction. What the armed forces here are less willing to have publicized are the preparations for deaths on a large scale and for casualties. And those are preparations, of course, which affect not just the military, but also the civilians, the people of Saudi Arabia, on whose land war may now soon be fought. In Jubail today, the nearest large town to Kuwait, training for chemical weapons protection continued. Every person in the town now has a mask. It's an area with many petrochemical plants. A recent fire in this one took a week to put out. But the president of a nearby plant says full evacuation plans are in order should there be a war. Every chemical plant, whether they are in Saudi Arabia or outside Saudi Arabia, typically have uh, an evacuation plan how to protect their employees. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what we are doing. Uh, At a checkpoint, local people are heading south hurriedly assembled belongings in overladen cars. I am afraid from uh, the war. Where do you come from? From Khafji. And where are you going? I'm going to the Damar city. Do you think no war will begin? I think. Abandoning homes, but not hope. <laughs> Let your finger close. Alex Thompson, ITN, Dakran, Saudi Arabia. And that's the world news from ITN. From all of us here, goodbye.